Hi everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Matchbox restoration series. In this episode, I'll be restoring the 28B Thames Trader compressor truck that I bought on a flea market together with some other Leslie models. The 28B model was introduced in 1959, replacing the smaller 28A Bedford compressor truck. Because the radiator grille in the back isn't trimmed with silver paint, it's clearly a later issue of the model. I start by removing the rivet in front with a drill. The back of the base is held by a split rivet. I gently bend both ends inwards to get the base separated from the body. Because the base can be removed without removing the rear axle, I use my Dremel tool to remove both axles. I have to be careful not to chip the bodywork, as the wheels are seated under the fenders of the truck. After removing both axles, the base comes off easily from the body. The next step is paint stripping the model. I use the same paint stripper I use in my other videos, but to my surprise the paint doesn't really look like it's coming loose from the model. After trying to scrub away the paint with my toothbrush, it's clear that this paint stripper is too weak for the paint to come off. I went online to find some help and many people suggested I should try caustic soda. I didn't record the paint stripping process with the caustic soda because I didn't know what to expect from the chemical reaction. As you can see, it did work great. As I was recording the footage of the strip truck, I saw that the body was out of shape and slightly twisted. I corrected this by gently bending the casting back to its original place with some pliers. After that I went on and applied the base coat of the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer to both the body and the base. I always apply light coats of primer to avoid losing detail in the casting. The white Tamiya primer is rather wet, so I avoid spraying too much at a time. While the base coat is drying, I try to make the wheels look new again by rubbing them with some cockpit spray. This makes the wheels have a dark black color again without painting them. It's remarkable that the wheels on this model, that's over 60 years old, have almost no sign of wear. The rear wheels that were on the inside of the axle almost look brand new. The axles undergo a quick sanding with some emery paper to make them clean. First, I sand the tip of the axles by moving it in different angles on a piece of emery paper. The other part of the axle gets wrapped with emery paper to sand it to a nicer finish. Here you can see the difference between the original axle and the sanded one. After sanding, I use some polish to get them nice and shiny again. By the look of the paper towel, the polishing does take off some leftover dirt of the axles. When the polishing is done, the axle looks brand new. For this model, I'm using the Tamiya X8 acrylic paint. It's almost the exact same color as the original one. While airbrushing the model, I realized that the white base coat makes the color a bit lighter than expected. But nevertheless, it's still within the range of colors you'll find these trucks in. Some are more orange yellow, some are more bright yellow. The 
base gets a coat of gloss black, like it was originally. The front of the body has some silver trim details that I'll paint with the Tamiya Chrome Silver X11 acrylic paint. I take my time for painting the small details so I get a clean result in the end. I don't paint the radiator grill in the back because this model originally didn't have this. As this is a restoration, I like to keep the details as they were as much as possible. It took me long to decide how to paint the front grille. When they trim these models in the factory, they usually applied one or two brush strokes onto the grille, painting past the protruding part of the grille. As the original Thames Trader trucks had only the protruding part in a certain color, I went for that look on this model as well. After the details are painted, I apply a clear coat of paint onto the body and base to protect the underlying layers. One of my subscribers suggested using a bright light over the area where I paint the models to have a better idea how well the clear coat is applied. I'm planning on trying this in my next restoration as this was a bit of a gamble on these parts. When the clear coat has dried, I can put the wheels and axles back onto the model. First the front wheels go on, then I have to put the base onto the body so I can put the rear wheels and axle back into place. I'm again using a hammer to carefully tap the tips of the axles to create a small lip so the wheels don't come off. I'm thinking of buying a drill press soon, but for now, the hammering method works and I still got all my fingers. I don't know why, but I wasn't able to drill a hole through the rivet post. Because it's in good shape and the base fits in nicely over the post head, I'll just super glue the base in place on both the front and rear rivets. And that's it. I'm happy that it got a second life after finding it on a flea market almost 60 years after it was made. Please let me know what you think and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I'm uploading a new video. Thank you for watching.